Hello, hello friends. So this morning what we're going to do is go over a quick algorithm called the longest word in a string algorithm. That name ain't great, but uh, it is what it is. And this is a fairly easy algorithm, so to break up and add a little bit of complexity to it, we will end up writing a compose, com we will compose some functions together to get this same functionality. Uh, so it shouldn't be that hard. Let me turn this Chet Baker down. That's my morning coffee music, but it's getting in my ear too much. All right, so what do we need to do here? If we take in, let's just say that we have a variable called string, and the, the string is, uh, this is the string, and the longest word should be longest. Uh, basically, if we went through this whole string, we looked for the longest word in it, it would be longest. And so we want to write an algorithm that would go through a string and return the longest word. Uh, you can do it for the shortest word, you can do it for the longest word, you can do it for duplicate words. It's just array, uh, string manipulation, that's all it is. So what I'm going to do to add a little bit of more functionality to it is instead of just looping over the string, I'm actually going to break it up into an array and then we'll loop over that and we're just going to be trying to just, you know, shadow boxing, just moving through stuff, shaking the rust off. So here we go. Let's do it like this. First, I'll write one big function that does all of this, and then I'll break it up into two functions and compose those functions together to just get, you know, it, it's good to, to do that, to add a little bit of complexity to stuff so you it's fresh in your mind as to how to do it. Either way, so let's go const uh, get longest word. That'll be our uh, function. And that's going to equal this. And then it will be passed in a string. So we'll just go str right here. And like I said, I wanted to break the string up into an array. So let's go const str r is going to equal str dot split at the spaces. Now let's take a look at this. Let's go in a node real quick. Let's say that I have a string. And that equals this is the string. And let's say that I went str.split at the spaces. That will return that. Now, if you try to do a spread operator here, like this, it'll just return this. It won't split it at the spaces. It'll split it, each individual character up. So that's why I'm doing it like this. So now that we have our uh, string array, we'll just go for let word of strr. So what does that mean? Uh, when you're doing the for of syntax, that works for arrays and strings, but if you want to loop over an object, you would use the for in syntax. However, that does some hinky stuff with the compiler, so you might want to just use the object.keys uh, method on the object uh, object to, uh, to find the keys in an object if you want to loop over it in that way and do some comparative uh, things with that. But that's a little bit outside of this. We want to stay on, on topic right here. So for let word, of str, that'll break every word into this word variable right here, or every element into the string will be stored in this word variable, so we can call little things on it. So we'll use that. Let's set up some uh, variables real quick, actually. Let's go uh, let max equal zero, because we want to compare that to every word length, and then we'll just go let result to store something that we want to return later. We'll just declare it right now. We won't actually assign it. So we'll go if uh, word.length is greater than max, which it will be because max is zero right now. So we'll go uh, max will equal word dot length, and then uh, result will equal word, and then down here we just want to return result, right? Not super difficult. And then we have our uh, string variable down here. So let's just console dot log. Uh, get longest word uh, with str. All right, should return longest when we get out of all this stuff. Yep, yep. Uh, no legit scratch because that's the name of the file that I run all this crud in, and it does return longest. Okay, cool. So it's working. So this is a workable solution for that algorithm. Cool. That's great. Uh, that's that's totally fine. However, let's say that to add some complexity to it, we wanted to break this up into two functions and then compose those functions together. How would we do that? Hmm. Well, looking at it, 
we could have this, we could call this function called uh, str2r, and then we could just, let me, cut, let me cut this out. Blurp. Uh, we could just return strr. That's all that function does. A really small function. Then we can go const uh, get or uh, loop through r. Uh, these are not great names, but whatever. And this will take an array. Actually, we'll call it get longest word. Okay, and that will take an array, and then we'll just add in this logic here. So we'll set up our variable of max and result, we'll loop through the array, and we'll return the result right here. So right here you're taking in a string, right here you're taking in an array. So let's say that we wanted to write a compose function that took in both of these functions and had an output for it. So let's just go const compose equals, and if you don't know anything about function composition, I've been making a couple of videos on it later. Uh, lately, I'll link them in the uh, video description below. So this is going to take an A and a B function, and then that's going to take some data, and then right here, what we're going to do is set off A with B with data. Okay, so let's walk through this. The first thing that's going to run is B with data, so that will be this str2r, so we're going to pass in a string right here that's going to return an array and then that array is what's going to be ran with a right here which will be the get longest and that will be this array and then that will return result which will be a word hopefully so we have to call that so let's go const uh, compose get longest word is going to equal the compose function uh, with a would a would have been get longest word and then b would be str to r right so right down here what we can do instead of console logging get longest word we can go composed get longest word with the data that's going to be passed in here is going to be the str so the str is right here so we'll just pass in str and uh, it should return longest if everything worked right oh God, let word of str, str is not defined. Okay, cool, let's see what we did here. Return str, oh, because it's just r right here. All right, let's see what we got here. And it does return longest, so let's talk about the error. So it's important to remember uh, data flow with this when you're writing compose functions. So in our first function, str2r, we're actually inputting a string and we're returning an array called strr. Right, so when this is returned, then basically what we're going to be doing is running this with strr right here. When we bring this array in, when I tried to use strr here, that's actually not defined in the execution context of this, and you can't use closures to to get at that because it's not the strr is not in the global scope it's actually in this execution context it's, uh, lexically speaking so you would have to just use r right here because r is being passed in right here so uh, well, after this is ran what this is going to return is result and result is just going to be the word that is the longest right here so basically your data is going from it's going in here it's splitting it up into an array and returning this array. Then longest word is getting ran with that array that's passed in. We loop over that array and we find the longest word and then output that. And that is what's output here at the console log. So under, and if you wanted to add another function to this compose, you would just go C right here and then add it down here. So it would be B set off C set off with uh, data there you go so that's how that's why compose functions are useful because you can add more functionality to them you can write smaller functions you can make these functions pure uh, if you wanted to and actually I in the next couple of videos that if I do some more compose functions I'll make sure that my functions are pure pure functions are basically that you pass in some data and you don't 
you don't actually act on the data that you pass in. The data is not, it persists. It's not, uh, it's, it's not going to be mutated running through all these functions. So that's a pretty good little, you know, little algorithm, composing some functions, writing some algorithmic stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned for more of this. Uh, I do these things pretty much every morning now. It's part of my morning routine. So yeah, all right, take it sleazy.